By the end of next year, I want to have made my first million from content creation. And let me tell you how I'm going to get there. I know you're probably thinking, what strategy are you taking? What product are you going to sell? But a lot of it doesn't come down to that because a lot of us have good products. A lot of us know what it is that we want to sell or we have a good course or we have a good digital resource or whatever it is that you're selling. But it isn't about that. It is about the mindset shift that you have to take to get to that stage. And in the past couple of years of being a content creator, especially since I left my job um, three years ago now, I think, two, three years ago now, I have had to change a lot of the way that I think. And I definitely am a very different person in how I think of entrepreneurship, work, making money, things like that, from just a few years ago to now. I want to talk a lot more about content creation and monetizing on this channel because I feel like it's quite a natural progression to where I am now. Um, of course, I'll still do the academic writing stuff. Of course, I'll always talk about academia and AI, but I think it's really important for me to also delve into the monetizing social media, building a brand side of things because I think I've got to a stage where I'm really good at it. I've also been helping a lot of friends and people around me that have wanted to start building their own platforms and they're actually doing pretty well. So I feel like I've got a bit of a niche where I'm able to support individuals or even businesses to get from a stage where they are thinking about um, social media or thinking about implementing social media to the point where they are actually profitable and building a strong audience. So today I'll be speaking about five mindset shifts that I have been taking and that I'm going through to, like I said, get to the stage where I can make my first million next year. The first thing is to value creation over monetization. This is something that is really important as it's taking you away from being busy on little tasks to allowing you to build for the bigger things. So for example, I've said no to a lot of uh, collaborations, a lot of brand partnerships. If it's not giving me enough money to mean that I'm spending an hour, two hours, days on this project, when I feel like actually if I were to use my time more wisely, I can, yes, I won't be getting paid for anything, but in the long run, I know that I can make more money and be more successful. So for example, instead of accepting a 1,000 or 2,000 pound deal to make a reel or TikTok, for example, whilst of course that's a lot of money, I will say no to that because that will take me half a day maybe, one day to do, when in that day I could probably script and create a course that I could sell for a thousand pounds. So imagine that the difference between the two, that is passive income that I'm selling for a thousand pounds every single time. Whereas this one is something that I'm doing once and yes, I'll make a bit of money for now, but then I have to chase the next bit of cash, right? I was thinking about long-term goals over short-term. But to be able to do this, you need to be in a position where you are okay saying no to 2,000 pounds because that's a lot of money, right? So it's a matter of getting to that stage slowly and making sure that you've built up passive income so you're not always relying on your time to equal money. The second thing is scalability and automation. I have quickly realized that I need to invest in tools that will allow me to automate. And in the last 12 months, I have spent money that I never thought I would, like not crazy amounts, but a few hundred here and there. I never thought I would, but I've paid for platforms like, for example, Hype Fury. I'll leave the link for it down below, but I've paid for Hype Fury and it's a platform where you can automate your tweets, your LinkedIn posts, um, your YouTube videos, so many different things can be automated within that platform. So what I'll do is I will sit down and I will post uh, two weeks of tweets and I then never open the app, the Twitter app again for two weeks, yet I'm getting posts put out there every single day, right? So it looks like I'm being active, I'm getting sales of my products, I'm getting views, I'm getting eyes, I'm getting followers, but I'm not. So I've invested in these platforms and Hype Fury isn't cheap. I pay over 500 pounds for the year for it. So it's a lot of money, but it allows me to scale because I'm no longer having to sit there and tweet every single day. And since paying for platforms like this, for example, on Twitter, just as one example, I went in the past year, I've grown by almost 50,000 followers just because of using tools like this that allow me to just sit down, batch, create content, and then um, I don't have to think about it again. So like I said, Hype Fury is one of them. 
I'll leave the link, the link for it down below, but also things like many chat I've used and I'm actually paying for at the moment to automate DMs as well. So yeah, all these tools are, they're money, but they are an investment. The third thing is to have an audience centric approach. And I took this approach, I would say, I think it was December, 2023. So just um, the last year, last December, I decided that I'm no longer going to post what I think I would like but I'm gonna post what I know my audience want. And I had to really be very strict with myself because what I found was that I didn't have a niche. People knew me as, yeah, the PhD girl, the one I did her PhD education. But actually when you went on my platforms, you would see things like fashion things and travel things and, you know, mum things and random different things. So if someone was following me for mum things and they saw an AI post, like it's not really relevant to them. So I wasn't getting the best views because my audience was so, scattered right in terms of what their interests were so i decided from january or december last year i'm not going to post anything on for example instagram if it is not related to ai and academia or productivity right and if you look at my views now on my my page i'm at 100k and i was on 20 something literally six months ago and th that change has just been focusing on my audience and because of that i've been able to scale up my instagram i have been able to get more um collaboration i can ask for more money when it comes to brand deals and there's so many things that you know can kind of uh snowball because of that growth but the key mindset shift that i had was that i am no longer going to just think about myself and what i like but actually I'm gonna think about what the audience wants, but also what am I good at and what am I passionate about? And ultimately that's education. You can go to any other um, Instagram uh, content creator and get fashion advice or makeup advice or travel things. But for me, I what my skill is, what my USP is, my what my unique selling point is, is my education and that side of things. The fourth one is to diversify your income stream. Again, this is something that I probably would say I've been doing now for about a year a year and a half so like i said all of these tips have been tips that i have implemented in the last two to three years so this one means that you are not just relying on one income source three years ago i just had i had one job that was my income source um and then i expanded i started accepting editing requests you know, the page doctor was born so i had two sources and then of course i was making youtube videos and those are getting more views and that became three and then you know slowly started to do more collaborations with brands that became four and then i started to produce like resources templates that became five so you can kind of see that now and then i got rid of the job because i realized actually that was the least <laughs> of the income sources and required the most of my time so that's when you drop the job right but you have to invest in yourself and invest in thinking about ways to monetize and think about ways to get more of a passive income than active. If you're going to a nine to five job, that is very active income. You can't do anything else in that time. You are fixed in that time and you're fixed to work for money, right? Which is absolutely fine. But if you have passive income streams, what it means that you can, you build a platform, you build something, you're able to acquire income from that literally whilst you sleep. And the most popular one these days are things like digital marketing, online courses, um, digital resources, like, you know, planners, templates, things like that. And, you know, I'm really happy to do another video about this kind of thing, if that's something that you guys are interested in. So just please let me know. And the last one, definitely not least, is to consistently adapt and improve. I was so stuck on again, two, three years ago before this mindset shift, I was so stuck on doing things the, the way that I was doing it because I liked it, right? Even if it wasn't working, even if I wasn't getting the views I was getting or the engagement that I was getting or whatever, because it was working and I would do it. Whereas when I realized actually, you need to look at your analytics, you need to look at what people are actually following you for. What are they saying? What are they finding interesting? What do they want? What are their pain points, what are the challenges, and then improve and change things, then you would say, right, okay, my thumbnails on YouTube aren't great, I need to work on that. My my video quality isn't great, I need to work on that. They want more content about lifestyle and motherhood, okay, let me go and add some of that in. And you're adapting based off of, of course, your interests, but more so, and importantly so, based off of your audience's interests. One of those examples are, I think it was must have been two, three years ago now, TikTok, of course, was huge during the pandemic. And at the time I was like, I'm not gonna go on this app. I'm not, you know, I'm not dancing. I'm not doing this kind of thing. So I said no to going on the app, even though my husband was like, go on it, talk about education. I'm like, no, no, no one's doing that there. I, that's my, one of my biggest regrets because even though, yes, I'm on it now, 
if I had jumped on it back then when I was doing absolutely nothing in the pandemic except for looking for, after a newborn, I would have been, I would have had such a big page at the moment. Um, and I think you have to be adaptable and continuously learn and continuously be happy to go with what's trending, but in a way that's unique and original to you. So I would never have gone on there doing the dancey, singy stuff, but I would have gone on there like I do now, speaking about education in an interactive and fun way. So that's just something to bear in mind. And these are five mindset shifts that I have been taking, I'm still on, and it's I'm definitely on the path now to becoming a more, I guess, successful financially, entrepreneurshiply <laughs> successful person. Um, and I hope that in the next year I can make my first million, especially being here in Dubai. I mean, the sky is literally your limit. Um, so yeah, let me know if you want to see more from me in this particular topic. Like I said, I know this is very different to what I normally talk about here on YouTube. And I'm happy to do like maybe a longer, pod, more podcasty type style videos about this. I really actually probably quite enjoy that so let me know um, if that's something that you want to see and i'll start a little series about it and um yeah uh leave the questions down below so maybe i can address one question per episode or something and uh, i hope to see you in my next video and i'll see you soon bye